couch dogs need the lesson Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to the fifth lesson in Finally Understanding Chords, the 10 lesson chord theory course right here on Lickin' Riff for free, of course, as everything is over here on Lickin' Riff. So, um, we're unlocking the guitar next secrets in everything that has to do with harmony, chord harmony. And um, we've been covering a lot of ground so far, and I really, really strongly suggest you watch the previous lessons if you haven't already, even if you think you know the basic chords, you might be surprised I've been analyzing them and dissecting them in depth, including this table right here, which is the embellishment table. I uh, introduced this in the introduction video, so uh, you might wanna go watch it before we go on because uh, we've been starting to touch complicated chords and complex harmonies. So uh, in this lesson, we're gonna discuss alternated bass chords. And uh, alternated bass chords can be anything from, um, you know, from a normal chord with its fifth note on the bass or with its seventh on the bass or with just an extra note of the chord that you haven't used on the bass note. For example, uh, let's start with D minor, right? Now, uh, D minor, you can play D minor over A if you add the A string to it. Okay, now A is the fifth of the D minor chord. This note, it's the five, this is A. So, you can add the fifth, no problem there. But what happens if you wanna add this? What is this note? If you look at the root, uh, if you look at the table actually, this is the bass note of the chord. It's the one, right? So let's count one, flat nine, nine. Okay, this is nine. And this, surprisingly, is the minor third. So if you play D minor with three on the D string, you're playing D minor. Okay, it's D minor over F, but F, is in there, so this is still D minor, okay? This really surprises some people because this looks like some really complicated chord shape. And true, when you add extra bass notes like B flat to it, this becomes B flat major seven, but we're not adding extra bass notes here, we're talking about D minor. So you have the third in the bass, and you have the same thing uh, with A minor, A minor over C is A minor still. It's A minor with the third on the bass, unless you're looking for a C6 chord, which we discussed a couple of lessons before. And this is where everything starts to overlap, as we've seen in the previous lesson. When you start talking about complex harmonies, every note you change creates a new chord. So if you add the third in the bass of a minor chord, the other way to look at it is that it's a completely uh, standalone chord, like C6. So um, when you do this, you're not playing A minor and C6, you're playing A minor and alternating the bass note to three. Everything has to do with context. So um, again, in A minor you can use E as your bass note. Okay, you have the the fifth in the bass note. E is the fifth of A, but you're having it in the bass note. So it all has to do with how you look at it. And now that you know that, that everything is relative in music, especially in chords, chord names, you can name a chord by the number of notes the chord has. Okay, this is one piece of information I've saved up uh, so far because uh, at the beginning, it's really daunting. If you have a chord with uh, five different notes, you can call it by five different names. That's how music works, music is relative. So, um, let's go back to, uh, let's say, um, D. What happens if you play C in the bass? Okay, D over C. What is C? C is the seventh note of D. If you play D7, you have C in it. 
So D over C is actually an inversion of C7. And you can also play D over C sharp, which makes it an inversion of D major 7. Look at the table. You have minor 7, you have major 7. So it's D dominant 7 or D major 7. So you call it D over C sharp, but the harmony is a major 7 harmony. Or D over C, but it's a uh, seventh harmony, technically. It's D uh, over C written down, but uh, you can call it D7. Okay? Unless you're creating a melody. Okay? And then it's not really a different chord. It's just the same chord with alternating bass notes as a melody in the bass. So um, now that we've touched the sevens, for example, A minor, over G, okay, it's A minor 7 because the open third string is the minor 7th of A. So A minor, actually, even A7, right? So if you play A7 over G or A over G, it's an inversion of A7. Everything makes sense if you just try to search for the octave above it and see which note it is in relation to the chord. Now, A minor over F sharp is interesting because uh, it's F sharp minor 7 flat 5. And um, we'll discuss that when we reach, uh, you know, more complicated um, chords and we soar up the neck. But trust me, this is, uh, just listen to it. It sounds diminished. It sounds a bit sinister. Okay? A sinister chord is usually a diminished chord. And A minor over F is uh, F major 7. Because if you uh, play E major 7, remember? Okay? And you have this on strings 2, 3, and 4, and you raise it up, you get this. So it's all a matter of learning to see it. Okay? I'm just explaining what these chords mean. <clears throat> Now, the interesting thing happens when you start toying around with the close bass notes of things or by uh, combining uh, different, different harmonies. Let, let me explain what I mean. If you play A minor, but you raise A minor to B minor, but keep the bass on A, you get this. It's B minor over A. It's B minor. But this chord sounds so good because everything is embellishments for A minor. Uh, if you dissect this, then you know that you get 8, flat 9, 9. So you get the add 9 of A. 5, sharp 5, 6. You get the 6 here. Okay? Minor 3rd, major 3rd, 4. You get 4 here, so you call it add 11 because it's not suspended. We've discussed that in the, in the lesson of uh, suspended 4, the second lesson, I think. So you can call this B minor over A, or you can call it A, 6, add 9, add 11. So now you see that complicated chord names have nothing to do with reality. It's nothing complicated, it's just A minor raised up by two frets and keeping the bass note A. Okay, so you get this, which is a really complicated chord theory-wise, but as you can see, nothing complicated about it when you play it. The same uh, goes for um, this. Okay, this is B over E. And B is the fifth of E. So um, you can call it B over E or you can check the embellishments. So um, this is nine. Remember when you play E, this is nine. And uh, this is major seven. Remember this is E, this is the seven, this is the major seven. So it's major seven add nine. E major seven add nine. And um, now you see another interesting example. If you play this, you get uh, E 
um, seven add nine. And you can also add this, which makes it uh, E sus four, okay? Because this is the major third, this is the four. So D over E becomes E sus, E seven sus four add nine. Or you can call it add 11 if you want. Um, and when you take D and play G with it, okay, then again, you get G, okay, add nine. This is uh, a note inside the G chord. Okay? This is a G chord. This is D, you have D inside a G chord. It's a fifth, okay, so this is why uh, this note sounds so good when you play it in G because it's the fifth note anyway of G. So if you play the D shape with G as your bass note, then you get add nine, the fifth note, and major seven. Remember, because this is eight in G, so eight major seven. So a really nice chord, D over G or with extra embellishments. Also D minor over G, so um, this, because you have the seventh. It's a really interesting sound. So you see everything can be explained if you just take the time to try and explain it. Now before we go, I just want to give you the coolest chord in existence. The coolest chord ever is um, a chord with the ninth on the bass. For example, F What's the second note of F? G, right? So if you play F over G, you get, uh, this didn't sound so cool, right? Because I broke it down. Wait until you hear it uh, strung. So um, this is F over G. Nothing fancy, right? It's F with, instead of the ninth here, you have this. So F over G, but if you play it, this becomes one of the most tensioned chords uh, that you can find that is not a seven. Actually, it is a seven, okay? But the extra harmony there uh, kind of masks that fact. Now, what's so cool about this? It leads perfectly into C. Okay, so... And you can also hear it in C over D. fourth or being the fifth leading to the one so uh, but again we're not discussing music theory we're talking chord theory so this this is this G7 add 9 add 11 okay and this is a really really can do it with any chord with the uh, bass raised by two. For example, A over B. A leading to E. A, A over B. Okay. Or C over D. Leading to G. Okay. So I'll leave you with that little nugget and I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll finally start talking about the caged method. Even if you think you know it, watch it anyway. What can you lose? I promise you there's going to be a lot of in-depth knowledge in there. So um, bye for now. Thanks for watching.